President Trump has lashed out at the Democrats' impeachment push, calling it an embarrassment to the country. But he adds it seems to be good for him politically. Joining us now, Pam Bondi, a special advisor to the president and a key member of his impeachment defense team. All right, Pam, during the break, you said you wanted to respond to Director Comey. Sure do. Go ahead. Sure do, Chris. You know, he's right. The men and the women of the FBI deserve much better than what they had, much better than what they had in James Comey. That man was fired in disgrace. He must have read a different report than we all read. He presided over the FBI in times worse than when J. Edgar Hoover was at the FBI. That man led the FBI. And it's unbelievable. That Steele dossier was central and essential to this report. It was fake. We know it was fake. And he says that his people did nothing wrong. And first of all, he was the leader. He was the one charged with briefing the president when, in fact, he was spying on the president. I can't, that guy needs a lawyer, by the way. I can't believe this. He okay. repeatedly okay. misled the FISA court. Klein Smith, as you said, lied, doctored an alt, a doctored an email, as well as the people refusing to provide the court with exculpatory evidence, okay. meaning evidence that, I, that I, would clear the president. Okay. I, we went over a lot of that with him. On the other hand, and I want to move on to impeachment, but on the other hand, Comey does point out that the inspector general found there was no political bias in opening, not the FISA warrant, opening the investigation, and that it was opened on a legitimate basis. And he points out all of the president's talk about uh, Obama ordering the tapping of his phones, uh, all of the talk about treason. I mean, if, if, if Comey's responsible for his misstatements, is the president responsible for his? Well, well, first of all, Comey was spying on the president when he went in to brief him, yet they felt compelled to brief Russia and Putin, yet not the candidate and then the president-elect of the United but States. But you're not answering my and question. Far, and, and, yeah, let, yeah let, me, let me answer the question about you saying that there was no bias opening the report. Because I didn't say John it. That's Durham what the inspector general said. Yeah, John Durham disagreed with that. The inspector general can only look at DOJ. He can only talk to the people who would talk to him. In fact, he tried to talk to Comey. He brought Comey in and he had to read. Comey kept saying he couldn't recall, he couldn't recollect. So they had to read him back in his security clearance, and he refused to do that because he didn't want to have to answer for all this. John okay. Durham said he disagrees with that because he has, he can talk to outside entities such as the CIA, many others. He can talk to other people. He can talk to other countries. So I think we need to wait and see. I'd love to come back on your show after Durham answers his investigation. And by the way, he has a grand jury. That's, so a lot of people need to be very, very concerned. Uh, we, that's, a, that's a date. We'll have you back on. Let's talk about impeachment. Let's talk about the Senate trial. Here's what uh, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said about working with the White House this week. Everything I do during this, I'm coordinating with White House counsel. There will be no difference between the president's position and our position as to uh, how to handle this. Now, Democrats note that before an impeachment trial, all senators have to raise their right hand and take an oath to do impartial justice. How impartial can it be when the, uh, McConnell says that he, quote, is taking his cues from the White House? Well, okay, so Chris, go back to the House proceedings. Adam Schiff started those proceedings himself, wait, wait, wait. hidden in the buffer Pam, of the I'm just asking no, hold, you. No, hold on. I, I'm just, uh, well, but wait, I'm asking you about McConnell saying he's taking right. his cues from the White House. Please answer the question. S S so we weren't given a fair trial in the House at all. Now it goes to the Senate, and these senators, the president deserves to be heard. We should be working hand in hand with them. The rules of evidence will apply. These are the senators who will decide if our president is impeached, which will not happen. We should and will work hand in hand with them. These are some of the weakest charges out there, Chris. You know that. Originally, bribery, all these things were thrown out. Absolutely nothing. We, are, we wouldn't be doing our job if we weren't working hand in hand with the Senate to clear the president of this charade, this sham that started with Adam Schiff, your next guest, and we're not going to let it continue in the U.S. Senate All right. because we will have fair proceedings. All right, let's turn to this week when the House is basically certain to impeach the president of the United States. Here is the chair of the Judiciary Committee, Jerry Nadler. For the third time in a little over a century and a half, the House Judiciary Committee 
has voted articles of impeachment against the president. Now, I, I've read earlier interviews with you. You say the president is focused on doing the people's business. But this is a stain. Uh, the president says it's not a good thing for your resume. So I'm asking you not on political talking point, points, but on a human level. And I know you've been in conversations with him. How does he feel about the fact that he's about to be the third president in American history to be impeached? Well, the president says this is difficult on his family. Of course it is. Because during the week, Chris, when they delivered a disgraceful vote to impeach the president during that week, and these aren't talking points, this is what the president was doing, the work of the American people, USMCA, the China trade deal, the work of the American people, combating anti-Semitism by executive order, holding a summit on family paid leave. That's his focus, going nonstop for the American people. So is this difficult? Of course it is. And that's why the lawyers, we are all handling this impeachment sham and charade with the weakest okay. of weak evidence now, as you said, going to the U.S. Senate. Okay. Well, I didn't say it was a weak case. I, I just asked you about the Senate trial. Congressman Jeff Van Drew of New Jersey, who was one of the two Democrats who voted against the impeachment inquiry in the first place, plans to switch parties and become a Republican. Are you in the White House, are you asking him to hold off so when he casts his vote against impeachment this week, he casts it as a Democrat? No, I have had, you know what, I, I, I have had no conversations with him, nor have I known of any of that. I heard that this morning, that he may change his party. He's probably changing his party, Chris, because he knows what his constituents care about. They care about jobs. They care about the economy. They care about the safety of their community. All these things haven't been happening because of these sham proceedings started by your next guest, Adam Schiff, in a secret room in a bunker. And, and the Republicans and Democrats Democrats are seeing this, and Democrats alike, they care about what their constituents want, what's important to this country. They know the president's not going to be impeached, and all this money and time being wasted when all, so many great things, so many bipartisan things could be happening for our country. Okay, I have one final question for you. President Trump tweeted late yesterday that we Fox News Sunday should not even be doing an interview with James Comey or with Adam Schiff. I want to put up his tweet. He writes, both commie cast MSNBC and fake news CNN are watching their ratings tank. Don't know why Fox News wants to be more like them. They'll all die together as other outlets take their place. Only pro-Trump Fox shows do well. My question, Pam, is does, does the president understand that it's the duty of a free and fair press to cover both sides of the story. Chris, of course he does. I think he's so tired of hearing all these lies. And frankly, I'm going to disagree with the president right now because I'm glad you had James Comey on because you caught him in multiple misrepresent, rip, misrepresentations once again. And I can't wait to hear from Adam Schiff next. He is the one who has abused, the only one who's abused their power in this entire proceeding is Adam Schiff. And I want to hear him answer your tough questions. He has lied at nauseum about the president, about okay. the involvement, subpoenaing phone records of his colleagues, attorneys, and fellow journalists. So I can't wait to hear what he's going to say when you question him. Well, thank you very much for the promo. Thanks for the plug. <laughs> Pam Bondi, thank you. Thanks for your time. Please come back and we'll have some more tough questions for you. I'd love to. Thank you.